Dreams are one of the most fascinating topics for people. Uh, every time I start talking about it, I see everyone's eyes expand. They're fascinating because they're happening to us every night and they seem to mean something and we don't know what. I think it's in a way a version of us that our brain creates every time we sleep that we don't control. And people find that in itself fascinating. And generally, there is a big movement to try to understand what the dreams mean and particularly control them. So not just read them, but actually write into them. I'm part of this movement. We're playing in various branches that all try to kind of give you an answer what dreams are for. The current one that gets a lot of love from scientists suggests that dreams are a way for your brain to rehearse potential futures or simulate potential futures so it can prepare for them. So if you're thinking about uh, whether you should uh, marry the guy or uh, dump him and move to Alabama and start a business and those two thoughts are in your mind right now, you don't know how to reconcile them, your brain might create a movie of you uh, moving to a different world and starting a business and filter this experience through your emotions because your brain would think for a moment this is real life and would see how it feels about it and then when you wake up might erase the entire movie but still maintain the feeling so when you are awake you will have an answer to how you feel about something because you kind of got to leave it for a few minutes overnight that is one theory to what dreams are for a simulation for the future and if that's true then it means we can actually help you by navigating your dreams to a certain direction and giving you a way to experience things that have not happened yet and see how you feel about them. Recording dreams to an extent is already happening. We can now look at the back of your brain where there's a part of your brain that is busy creating images all the time. When you see something, this part of your brain is the part that is active and a group in Japan was able to essentially have a person go to sleep and while they're dreaming, look at this part of their brain and kind of decode the visual. So they're seeing that his dream right now has something blue or has something that looks like a contour of a human moving around or maybe text and kind of start to get a readout of the dream visuals. That's one group. Parallel to that, there's a group in uh, the US that tries to look at different parts of the brain, the uh, semantic part of the brain and get a understanding of the semantics that's happening right now very crude and requires a lot of learning when you're awake of how your brain works when you're awake before we can have you go to sleep and then apply the same learnings to really kind of understand what's going on and when it comes to navigating a dream there's been work in the last decade that shows that we can nudge your dream in different directions to some extent so for instance uh, if you go to sleep and you're at the dream state so you're mind is starting to create a dream, if we spray a certain smell into your nose, uh, if the smell is uh, positive, usually your dreams will go in a positive direction. If the smell is negative, it's going to be in a negative direction. We're playing right now in learning all the different smells that penetrate, how granular and specific can we be in controlling the content and with that I think we're starting to actually control the dream to an extent that it's even wider so we can not just tell you hey let's have a pleasant dream but let's have a pleasant dream about someone you know let's say as you were a kid and the two of you are out uh, in the beach. So that that's kind of a, a, a next step that we're heading to.